in your day-to-day -day life out here, you just come across problem after problem after problem, but then you also have solution after solution after solution, and you you get around things, and there are things that I understand. Like, I understand this. I understand that there is a pool of water at the back of the cottage, and I need to get it away so water goes downhill. I can fix that. Like, there's just things... I understand this. Um, whereas city life just can be so complex and bureaucratic and it's not intuitive. Like this yeah. life is intuitive. It just I've never lived this kind of life before. I've never lived outside the city. I've never even lived without a housemate or a family member. But as soon as I got out here, everything just makes sense. Mm. I know what to do. Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom. This is the first video in another new series here on my channel in which I'm going to be visiting and talking to people who, like me, have quit the rat race, left their jobs and urban lives behind to move to the beautiful wilds of Ireland to grow food, to keep animals, to restore buildings, learn a whole new set of skills and transform their lives. But what I'm really interested in finding out in meeting people who've done what I did or something similar is why. What drove them to make that move? Uh, what was their life like before? What did they hope it would become? And does the reality live up to that? And in this first episode, I'm going to introduce you to a young guy from Dublin who did something which I definitely wasn't brave enough to do. Like me, he bought an old derelict cottage on an acre of land, you can see mine in the background, surrounded, as I am, by cow fields and forestry. But he did it without having a car. His location is almost as rural as mine, but his only means of transportation is a bicycle. What's your name? My name is Kyle. <laughs> and uh, how old are you? I am 31. I turned 31 two days ago. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to your home, I should say. And uh, where are you from originally? I'm from Dublin. Okay. Yeah. And um, where are we now? We're in Sligo. Yeah. In, in County Sligo, somewhere out in the wilds. Yeah, we're between two places. This, so where I'm at, there's not much. Okay. Yeah. And um, tell me a bit about your home here. Uh, what kind of place is this? Where do you live? Uh, I live on a small little acre with a river running through it. So like a third of it is on the other side of the river. Um, and I've got this old 300 year old cottage. Um, uh, it could even be older than that, but I, I have no way of dating it for sure. Um, I didn't realize it was that old. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a lot older than mine. It's, it's at least 250 years old. Wow. Yeah. And do you live here alone? Who are you with? Uh, just me, me and the dog. That's it. So we're now in winter. It's now January. Yeah. How are you finding it in January in the winter compared to back in the summer? Uh, not as hard as I thought it would be. I was actually, I was very anxious in September. I was kind of getting worried. I was like, I don't have everything set up. I'm not ready for winter. I, like I didn't even have my, my stove or anything at that stage. So, um, and I'd never live, I've never lived outside Dublin. So I didn't know what winter would be like in the Northwest. Obviously it does rain a lot more, but like, um, it hasn't been so bad. Mm. I've actually, it's been nice. It's been dark. It's a lot darker. There's no street lights. Um, but it's surprising how bright the moon is. Mm -hmm. That's something that um, I, I didn't really consider when I was living in the city. But the moon is quite bright. I guess yeah. in the city you don't really see the moon and the stars so much because there's so much light pollution. Yeah. Oh, the star. Like even just last night, um, I looked. I just happened to look up and like. The stars here are incredible, and um, it's just mesmerizing. Whenever, whenever I notice the stars out here, I just, I, I always stop and look mm. up. So, tell me a bit about your life before moving here. What, um, what brought you here? What, how were you living? What were you doing? What was your job? Um, 
my job was I spent the most of my time in hospitality, working in bars and restaurants and just the service industry in general and uh, the coffee shops. I've done it all when it comes to hospitality, really. Um, and then I moved into doing some web design and development, graphic design. Like when I, because I, I was in hospitality for like 10 years, so I kind of got sick of it. I moved into trying to be self employed and that kind of failed. Um, I went into photography then. Um, photography was well enough. Um, and then dog walking was another thing that I'd do. Did you have a particular career ambition? Is there anything you wanted to achieve? Um, when I was younger, yes, but as I got older, no. Uh, I don't think I was really made for the modern world. <laughs> I just mm. like, I thought, like I tried, and I was like, okay, I I picked this thing, and I'll try this thing, and it just not nothing ever felt like real. Um, and does what you're doing here, your life here, mm. fill that void in a way? Yeah. Does absolutely. this feel like a career in a way? Yeah, yeah, like professional homeowner. Like, <laughs> um, I haven't done it yet, but like I, I do plan on doing things like making my own furniture and the idea of like fixing my house and I'm doing all my own plumbing, all my own wiring work and being involved in all of those processes so I know my home inside and out how it functions how it works and if anything ever goes wrong I can fix it Um, so I, I intimately know my home my land like everything you know um, and then growing my own food and just I want to be involved in all of, all of my processes so the life that you had before you moved here um, did you enjoy it Um. It wasn't hell. It wasn't like horrible. Um, my life before I moved here was just static. Like you feel like you're not going anywhere up or down, left or right. You're just in this constant like hamster wheel thing. It's just I'm got to work, got to pay the rent, got to eat, got to get the food, got to work, got to pay the rent, got to go to sleep. It's just, you're just kind of, I felt trapped and stuck. Um, Did it feel like something was missing from your life? Yeah, yeah. It just, it didn't really feel like I was living. I was just surviving. And I did, it, like, it's funny to say, like, I was just surviving in the city when I'm out here and this is what people would call just surviving but I feel like I'm actually living now um, yeah it's kind of it's I think people have it backwards mm -hmm. absolutely yeah here I feel like I'm moving forward and I'm going towards something um, and I can see like I, I know we're sitting here and like I'm, I'm basically living in a construction site but I don't I when I look around I see the trees that I've planted fully grown I see like my vision is I I can mm -hmm. see everything as it's going to be mm -hmm. already yeah what was it like moving here how did that because you didn't have a car so yeah so my sister was kind enough to, to drive me down um, we rented like a small little go car van Mm -hmm. thing and she drove me down with the bare essentials in that thing um and yeah she dropped me off and then just drove back to dublin and what did it feel like at that point when you were by yourself um it just felt like, i don't know what adjective is suitable but it was just, um, it was satiating, mm -hmm. I guess, fulfilling. It was just. So you uh, didn't feel fear. You felt no. Right. I just I didn't 
I didn't do anything. I didn't do any work. I just, I just walked around and mm -hmm. stood in place. I listened to the birds because like it was June, so it was just, there were flowers everywhere. And I just uh, enjoyed the space. Um, Did you feel yeah. connected immediately to the location, to the house, to the land? Yeah, like the first time I was down when I rang the estate agent, I didn't feel any connection to the space at that point, but I just kind of felt like I can do this, like this is doable. But when I when I was actually here and I owned it, because that was the first time I'd been here after the contracts were signed. I was like, this is mine. Mm -hmm. Um at that like that was a that was just a feeling, I don't know how to describe it, I've never felt that feeling before. It was just total just comfort and peace. Just like this is mine. Yeah, for the first time in your life, right? Yeah, owning somewhere. The house is known to the locals as the Bridge Man's Cottage, and the Bridge Man was—I don't really know what to say about him now. Yeah. Well, I guess it's because yeah. there's a bridge there, right? Well, yeah, there's a bridge. <laughs> Sorry. Hence the Bridge um, Man. And now you're the Bridge Man. Now I'm the Bridge Man, or the new Bridge Man, or the young Bridge Man. Yeah. Why is there a bath up there? What's the story oh, behind that? the bathtub. <laughs> this is going to be um, my hillbilly hot tub. Oh. So I'm going to uh, put some copper pipe coiled into... Well, I'm going to make a, a masonry stove. Uh, so it'll be more fuel efficient. And then I'm going to use this for my outdoor bathing. Because at the moment I'm using a bucket and a cloth. And I'm just scrubbing myself like that by the stove. Uh, but this would be much nicer to be outside, you can look at the stars. Did you have much money when you moved here? You don't need to give me figures, but <laughs> I did have... you have a security net there? After moving down, after getting the mobile, I had maybe 300 euro left. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so it's coming at five. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, I used every, I spent everything to get down here. Because, like, I, I also had to get all my tools and everything as well. So, yeah. like, I... I bought all those things before I moved down. Right, yeah. So, because there's, there's a certain minimum amount of tools that you need in order to, to function, like wheelbarrows. Yeah. You'd like, I would say like two wheelbarrows isn't too much. No, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like. <laughs> what, one new one every year is a birthday yeah, treat, you know? Yeah, yeah, Like, I kind of want two wheelbarrows now. I like, cause the, I would ha I would find uses for them. Oh, Wheelbarrows, yeah, yeah, yeah. shovels, spades. And not having a car, if you see something like this online that you want to buy, how do you get it here? Is um, it all kind of negotiating with neighbours? Well this, I was actually very lucky. The guy, I've been looking on Dundee for like the last year. I just pop on every now and then and I see what's available. Um, I haven't been able to find any that are that were nearby, like they're all in like, they're in Limerick or Mead yeah. or Loud or whatever. This one popped up and it was in Sligo and the guy said he was willing to deliver within reason. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful bathtub as well. It's much nicer than I, like, you see bathtubs, these like cast iron tubs in fields because farmers use them to give their cattle water. I thought I was gonna get something like that, but I managed to get this. So I was just very, very lucky to get it but you can't like I do negotiate with neighbors on on things like I have neighbors that bring me into town if I need to go into town like obviously like if they're going I wouldn't like get them to just bring me in but if they usually have their routine and I can just get a lift mm -hmm. Um I guess that's why it's important to kind of make friends in the community and get to know yeah. your neighbors and Absolutely. integrate into that community so that you can you know they can help you out when you yeah, need yeah. help and you can help them when they need help and... yeah and no, if i ever need anything like i know that there's people there that want to help me there's people that like offer to like i, I go and get the petrol myself on the bike and um, for my generator but like i have neighbors that offer me 
they like they say don't do that we'll I'll do that for you whatever I've had a couple of people say that but I I won't like I don't I'm not taking advantage of them mm -hmm. like I can do it myself but uh, yeah. if, if I do need something I'm not afraid to ask either right um and at the same time like I'm willing to help in whatever way I can and I do odd jobs around the village and were there any disasters in terms of moving here were there any things that went horribly wrong yeah my neighbor's cattle because like nobody had been here for like 30, 40 years, they they would often come in here and like that that day I moved down, they actually came in, and because I didn't know the cattle or how dangerous they were or what like, um, day one was <laughs> day one was a disaster in that sense, but I got to meet the neighbors. <laughs> what because the cows were in here? Yeah, yeah. So I <laughs> I I had to just leave and walk down the road and just. I knock on doors and I, I I knew there was a neighbor down the road that had cattle out the front and I assumed he would know who owns these so I went up and, and tell me a bit about the bike because it's gonna surprise a lot of people that you don't have a car <laughs> yeah I moved down here with no car no job I had a job lined up which I got in the end but uh, I, there was no guarantee I was gonna get it but um no car no job I don't know anybody um, I have no electricity, no running water, so I, I went really into it. But um, yeah, no, the bike. So the bike's your lifeline, really. Yeah, yeah. I, I've had flat tires and stuff, and I've had flat tires at inopportune moments. But then it, that's why having neighbours is really handy. And then, mm. um, but yeah, you need to make sure you have a collection of spare tubes and spare little bits around for when those those inopportune times come. Does it ever feel lonely here? Uh, no. I've never felt lonely. Um, Is that because you're so busy? Or probably. Do you think it has something to do with your personality, that you're not inclined to feel lonely? It's probably a bit of both. Um, I... Yeah, I guess I just don't have time to even think about being lonely. Like, when I was younger, being around people my own age was important. But now, like, I'm still, I'm not old. I'm still young. <laughs> I'm, I'm 30, 31 now. Um, but that desire to have people my own age around me is waning. I have, like, I have friends here, mm -hmm. you know. My neighbours are my friends and... Um, doesn't really matter what age they are. Um, well, like I'm living in the cottage at the moment. Like I have walls to keep the wind away from me. I have a roof that keeps the rain off me. I have a floor that keeps my feet dry and a stove that keeps me warm. What more do you need? That's it. So, like there, are, like obviously, I want to improve things. I want to remove the concrete to fix the damp. There is damp and condensation in the cottage. I can manage it. Um, the floor is cold, but. Like it does, it's not the biggest issue for me in the world, but like, I'm gonna get around to fixing that. Um, I might get around to fixing the roof at one stage in the future as well. But I'm just one thing at a time, and um, eventually I'll get there. You know? Were you close to your family before you moved here? Were they um, an important part of your life? Because I think one thing a, lo a lot of people say about this way of life um, is that the thought of leaving their family, the people they're close to, Puts them off or they worry about doing that mm. um no i've always been a bit of a not a loner like I, i've i've i was popular in my youth and i had a lot of friends and loved many different groups of friends and stuff and with family like it's, it's not like that i'm anti-social or anything i've just i do prefer my own company and I've got a large family as well, uh, a lot of cousins, a lot of aunts and uncles, and um, I just—it just feels like a lot of pressure. So I like I've just always been comfortable on my own, mm -hmm. and I love going hiking, and um, that's something I've always loved as a kid. Is like even when we went on family hikes, I would always be way out ahead of the rest of the family and when my brother and sister would be tired and want to turn back home 
I'd want to get to the top of the hill. Like I was always wanting to go out. On top of this, this flat area here is going to be where my veg is going to be grown. And, and it's all obviously, if you, this it doesn't look like the best agricultural land, all this dabby waterlogged clay. Um, but clay is full of nutrition. It's just not bioavailable to plants and the solution to that is to add organic material. So I'm going to be doing a no dig method that uses silage. So I'm going to get two, three bales of silage and I'm going to spread it out here and I'm going to put a tarp over that and then I'm going to cut holes in the tarp and then grow my veg through those holes in the tarp. So I'm going to do that every year and just keep adding organic matter to this and hopefully eventually one day you'll be able to stick your arm into this and it'll be nice, tilthy, lovely soil. What's important to you? Do you? Is it about the animals? Is it about growing food? Is it about just restoring the house? Um, what's your goal, your plan here? Um, my, there's no, I don't think there's any one thing that is my my goal like there's no like oh it's about the animals it's about the cottages it's, it's all of the, they're all little projects yeah to build up to this broader thing i just i want i want to live my life a different way than most people um i want to live my life the way lives used to be lived um, and <laughs> I'm not sure if he agrees no. <laughs> he wants a comfortable yeah. Dublin apartment <laughs> yeah. um, it's kind of more I had this appreciation I have for tradition and the past is kind of a driver for it but it's also it also ties in with my need for financial security and home security and I want to eat healthy food and I want I want I love animals I like being around them and I want to raise them and um I love flowers and foraging and hiking and it's just like this it's just it's all encompassing holistic thing it's there's no one element of it that's the driving force you know mm -hmm. this is the pond that I've had dug out for the geese and maybe ducks if I ever get them. Um, I do eat meat and geese are don't have the most amount of meat on them but they have a lot of fat which is good for you um, and fat their fat's really good for preserving meat as well so if you don't have refrigeration uh, you can confit the goose in its own fat mm. and keep it in a jar and you can leave that cooked goose meat on a shelf for six months to a year and it stays fresh. Didn't know that. Yeah, and then there's you get the eggs as well, and I have eggs for my chickens. Um, so chickens, geese, ducks yeah. as well. Did you say? Or no ducks? Maybe I don't know. I'm not. I'm not too pushed on it. If I get ducks, like I'm sure an opportunity will arise where someone's like, "Hey, do you want some ducks?" And mm -hmm. I'll say, "Yeah." Fish. Fish. Yeah, I want to put a um, common carp in here, which is a it's a native Irish fish, and they're. They would do well on a pond like this. Like that's probably from the surface of the water there, it's probably six foot deep. Um, I just need to get the plant life in there because they, yeah. they eat plants, they're ve vegetarian, so. Is, is time management part of it? Yeah. Um, I've I spent so many years, I spent 10 years at least saying yes sir no madam of course right away oh, i'll get that or oh, it's too cold okay like it was just like it was uh, and then i was serving them but i was also serving my bosses and the managers and constantly just thinking about other people and not having anything for yourself and not even that much money at the end of it just to show for it and so yeah time is a huge thing but I, I still serve nature's time yeah um so i'm still on i'm still on a schedule but it's it's more it's more doable and 
Like like right now it's winter, so I'm not really there's not much to do. Um, I chop wood, I plant trees, I I gather water, I cook, and then it's dark and I go to bed. But it's kind of it's nice to get that because in the summer it's non-stop. Mm -hmm. Like there were some days because I was I was working for neighbors and I was fencing and I was working up in the bog and I was I was doing all all other sorts of things, not even just for here. Um and there's just so much to do in the summer and then i can like i can imagine here now when i when i get my things in place you're constantly managing brambles and bushes and shrubs and things just things are growing all the time you need to cut things back and manage things keep things neat tidy and um it's nice in the winter to get that break and you have nature telling you it's time to rest Mm. Yeah, I never had anyone tell me it's time to rest in Dublin. You know? Just for the very beginning, just because I'm one man, I'm on my own. I have no car, like all these things. Like I've got a lot, a lot to manage. Um, I just want things to be as easy as possible. Chickens are easy, geese are easy, because you don't even need to feed the geese because they eat the grass. Um, then potatoes, onions, cabbages—they all grow very, very well in this climate. So. Um, yeah. you'll still be kept busy <laughs> oh yeah yeah definitely but uh, I try, I want to keep the amount of work per day on the property as little as possible and why is that? Um, not that I don't enjoy it I just want to enjoy the rest of it as well like, I want to enjoy making the place more beautiful as well as be able to sustain myself off of it at the same right. time I think like, things still annoy me and frustrate me like things go wrong and um, things kind of get in your way like you want to I want to do this job but I can't do this job until this other job is done like there's these things but they're they're all within my control mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the big things is is the control aspect of it and um, because you find yourself more stressed and you, you only find yourself stressed in situations where you're not in control mm. like when you're stuck in traffic that's a situation you're not in control and people can lose their temper in, in those situations um, and I'm in control of most things there are things I'm not in control of but they're I have time as well so is control a big part of it? is regaining a sense of control a big part of what makes you happier here? yeah yeah, I'd say so, yeah. It's, um, I'm in control of kind of everything to do with myself, my life, the direction my life is going in. It's all just up to me. A lot of people are scared of doing something like this and I want to take that fear away from people if I can. Um, are you afraid of reaching an end point? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's something um, I think about a lot. What happens when you reach the end? Yeah. What's your purpose in life at that point? Yeah. Like, at the moment, I've just got... I've got too much to do. I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed with how much I have to do. But then, in the future, I'll, like, I know I'm going to look back at this time and just think, like, that was that was the best. Like, that first year. Mm -hmm. Um that first year when I, like when I first moved here I slept in a hammock in the forest and then I got the mobile and I the mobile was down by the road and I slept in the mobile and then eventually I got the cottage going I moved into the cottage and just the the transitions and the changes that I've been going through I still haven't I've been here six months I still haven't fully moved in just because everything's just been shifting so much I've wanted to do this since I was teenager but it was like a kind of like a, a a pipe dream it was like oh but it's not possible like there's no way i'll be able to to do that but i i have always kind of had this in me that i wanted to live this way um and i started making changes in my life when i was 26 was when i started like getting my my act together <laughs> Mm -hmm. and stop messing around 
the traditional way of life and the way people lived in the past I admire it so much um, I just think it's incredible what what Irish people how Irish people well, even just Irish people people in general have lived um, I'm, I'm just more infatuated with the Irish side of things because well I'm Irish grew up here um, people like the Blasket Islanders, I admire them so much and the way they lived and I just think it's a it's a way of life that's that's disappearing and dying out and um, a lot of people lament uh, other cultures and the way they live currently or used to live, they, they lament those ways of life dying out and we don't really look at ourselves and that our way of life is dying out as well and it's it's probably further along than than those other nationalities um, so I just want to try and like preserve knowledge and um, skills ways of living and hopefully pass it along at some stage do you think you need to be a very very specific type of person which you probably are and I probably am. Yeah. Like, first of all, introverted. Yeah. And quite um, having a deep need to control your own environment and be sort of master of your own life. Yeah. Do, do you think there are certain characteristics that you have to have for this life to work? Yeah. Um, I think it's a big part of it is like I stopped drinking and I stopped smoking and I, I did do drugs when I was younger as well and I stopped doing all those things years and years ago and then I, I gave up social media I don't even watch movies anymore like I just I started cutting all of these things out of my life even like before I moved here and what I've done by cutting those things out is I've lowered my my dopamine baseline so like if you're if you're used to being like getting dopamine rushes all the time like oh, i'm swiping on my phone and i'm drinking beer and i'm like kissing this girl and i'm going to this party and i'm watching this movie i'm playing this video game your your dopamine level baseline is oh way high so when you come out somewhere like this it's when you go below your baseline it's it's very hard for you to cope mm. my baseline is so low <laughs> that seeing a robin land beside me is just like the most mm -hmm. interesting thing you know, I've seen thousands of robins but it's just it's still interesting mm -hmm. to me um, but then I'm more productive as well because I'm less distracted um, so if I need if I, if I have work to do I can just go do it because mm -hmm. I don't have this craving for stimulation the work is stimulating me and was that did that take a while to get to that place was there a period of adjustment or were yeah you, were you immediately there no that took a lot a lot of work right um slow like it was a, it was a, there was a process to that i think I'm, i was not i'm a naturally introverted person but i i i lived an extroverted life um I socialized a lot and I think but I think a lot of my my drinking and, and drug use and, uh, and all that was part of um me coping with extroversion or like I had a desire and um, to be extroverted I wanted to be in these situations but I don't think I naturally could um, I see right yeah yeah I think that's why like like most young people do drugs most young people drink and I think I wonder how many of them actually want to be where they are because I, I didn't want to be where I like I did want to be there at the time I wanted to be there but like in the grand scheme narrative of my life like I did not actually want to be where I was yeah. I thought I wanted to be there it was an absolute pleasure spending time with Kyle, and the truth is this video could have been three hours long, the amount of footage that we shot. 
His passion, as well as his knowledge for self-sufficient practices and all that goes with this way of life, absolutely shines through when talking to him. At first glance, Carl is someone like me who appears to have made his life more difficult. By moving away from family, um, from career and job opportunities, from people of his own age. To live without electricity, transportation, companionship. And who now faces an enormous amount of hard physical work. And learning in the years to come. But what he's actually done is choose to follow a path which gives him back control of his life. And in doing so, he now has the opportunity to create something incredible with his own hands, hard work and imagination that's his and will always be his. It's the same choice which I made, but I have to admit, I would never have been brave enough to do this without a car. And for that, I take my hat off to him. I hope his life and courage is the inspiration to others, which I know, having spoken to him at length, he wants it to be. It's going to be fascinating revisiting Kyle in the years to come, to see just how his plans unfold. Things will go wrong as they have at times for me, but that's all part of the adventure, and he knows that, he's not naive. There'll be people watching this though, who are thinking, He's young, give it a year or two, the novelty will wear off and he'll be back in the city. But I think those people are wrong. I see that same glint in Kyle's eye when talking about his plans and future here, which I know others see in me. This isn't just a project to him, it's his entire sense of purpose in life. And I think that's the greatest thing which self-sufficiency and a choice like this can give you purpose. The bridge man has returned and I think he's here to stay. Do you feel that moving here has changed you as a person? Um, I don't know if it's changed me more so than it's allowed the real me to come out. Gonna be so, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I wish I'd put something warmer on before we started I'm on filming. The, I'm on the verge of shivering a bit. So, I wanted to save for another two years. Um, sorry, this. I have a neighbour walking down the road here. Ah. Let's see who that is. I um, wonder what the heck we're doing. I know. <laughs> so is being oh. self <laughs> what, did, what happened? He was kind of bump into the, ah. the light. I I can feel my voice starting to shake. <laughs> it's not showing, I promise yeah. you. It's not showing at all. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the hedge. <laughs> 